Hello. Eric Mark, Standing in Place, episode 33. It is November, I want to say 20, yep, 24th. Yep, as though you could hear what I was thinking before I said the word 24 out loud. <laughs> That's not how that works. Um, yeah, episode 33. Still standing in place. Uh, today we're standing in place in the snow, but not in the snow because I'm indoors. But it's snow today, right? Gotta love Colorado. Uh, it was 60 some degrees like two days ago. And this morning I wake up and there's six inches of snow outside. Uh, it's not very unusual for living here, which then means, so, you know, it was enough snow that I had to go out and, and clean clean my car, uh, which is a strange way to describe what you're doing to your car. Because what, what's really dirty about snow being on your car? It's not dirty. It's very clean. Like, it's beautiful. It just fell from the sky. And your car is now just a pretty white lump. Um, if it was dirty, if it was dented, if your paint looks terrible, if your windshield has a crack in it. It's all gone. It's all beautiful now because your car is covered in this layer, this blanket, this white fluffy blanket. It's beautiful, but yet you have to clean it. You have to clean water off of your car because that's all that snow is, right? Snow is just water on pause. If you didn't do anything, if you took no action, your car would clean itself because the snow would eventually just turn into wet. You'd have a wet car and then you'd have a dry car that didn't get dirty. So I don't know that cleaning is really the proper term for what you're doing. You're getting the snow off your car because you can't see out the windshield because we live lives with schedules and, and we like jobs and places that we have to be so there's a reason that you can't just wait for your car to become usable again you have to clean it clean the water off of your car strange this feels like like a, another problematic label like the whole social distance thing where it's not social it's physical distance because you're giving me a measurement six feet is that's a dimension that that you can measure it's not social anyway so i cleaned my car i cleaned my car so that i could drive because i had to go to work and uh after you clean your car then you got to clean the sidewalk right the neighborhood that i live in you can actually get a fine if you don't clean a sidewalk which again is strange we're cleaning concrete that has dirt on it but you're taking off the substance that would actually make it cleaner in order to make it easier for people to pass. So this is another example of, of pretty much you're doing something that's nice, something that's thoughtful, right? I clean, clean my sidewalk. I actually went across, I got the neighbor's sidewalks too. And that people are running, people are walking, people are trying to get to a bus station. Uh, they're trying to walk their dog. So like you're, you're kind of a dick if you don't do that. Even though it's, again, kind of strange. You just wait, it'll go away. Uh, but people got to get places. So I clean my sidewalk. I clean my sidewalk. It's beautiful. And then you get to the driveway and I got, you know, the little walking path. And that actually gets into a strange territory because I realize that I take a strange pride in, like, making it neat which some would argue that maybe I don't make it as neat as, as I see in my head, but I try to make like a straight line at the edge of the driveway and then where it turn into the little walking path, I want that corner to like look good. And I don't want to push, when I scoop the snow, I want to throw it into the yard. Sometimes I just make a single pile and I'll move all the snow into one pile because I, I like the way that looks. Or I toss it in because I don't want to knock down the like square edge of the snow because I want to feel like I'm walking through like a little 
tunnel or something, but it's not a tunnel because it's six inches and I'm six feet, so that's the worst tunnel ever if it was to be described as such. But I take a strange pride in, in trying to make that neat. And then I even uh, I make a path that goes to the neighbor's yard because I realize the mailman likes to walk, like he delivers our mail and then just like walk straight through to the neighbor's yard and cuts across the yard. But I don't like seeing the footprints. I don't like seeing the footprints because it disrupts my art. It disrupts the beauty that I have created by making these, these pretty lines. So I make a straight path, you know, 90 degrees to the driveway where it goes straight out to the neighbor's yard. So at least when he walks, he's not making footprints. He just walks down a path that I made so that when I look across the yard, I've got beautiful, like, untouched snow and then these straight lines where the walkway is. It's weird to care about that. It's probably just as weird as people that take way too much care in, like, making... Uh, crosshatch patterns when they mow their lawn um, but it's probably more like those what are those Zen gardens where they've got uh, you just have like sand and a little rake and you make art but it's completely temporary like it just you just do it over again and keep changing it or maybe those sidewalk artists that they use the chalk and they make some people make these amazing like it looks like there's a hole you're gonna fall in and you walk and you gotta avoid it but really it's just chalk and if you, like, spilled your drink on it, it'd be obvious that that's not truly what's going on. What I'm trying to say is I'm pretty much as amazing as a sidewalk chalk artist that can trick you into believing there's a hole in front of you, so much so that you walk around it. I'm that good with pushing a little bit of frozen water around my driveway. Just so you know. A lot of, a lot of talents. Super skilled. I don't know why that's something I, I put as much effort into as I do, but I don't think I'm the only one. I think a lot of people are trying to make straight lines and trying to make their art out of cleaning snow off their premises, off their tiny yard. I don't know. And then it just goes away. It's very fruitless. You do it, and then it, if the sun comes out, especially here, the sun comes out for a couple hours, it's all gone anyway. I don't know if that points to recognizing the impermanence of the things that we do and if we should actually take more satisfaction in, in those short-term accomplishments. Like, I did that. I made it look the way I wanted to. I didn't get frostbite on my nose. And now I can pretend the yard looks amazing until the sun comes out for two hours or the mailman walks across the front yard and then it's over. Maybe there's something to that. I don't know. That's all I really had to share tonight. Uh, I'm sharing to those of you that don't live in Colorado that it snowed here and, and I moved some of that snow. I moved solid water from one location to another so that I can drive a multiple thousand pound automobile in and out of the driveway making slightly less marks. I don't really know the point. Hey, I hope you're all doing well and we'll see you in a week. <laughs> Take care. Bye.